lot of people. And it's, um, it's actually uh, pretty scary. If you look at the population over 65, one in 10 people. And chances are, uh, if you are lucky enough to miss cancer and heart disease, you're gonna get Alzheimer's disease. One in two over 85. No direct link. There may be some indirect links. So there are uh, uh, risk factors that tend to predispose people towards Alzheimer's disease as opposed to inheriting it from your family. Uh, it, inheritance is very small, but there are certain risk factors that show up. Um, there's a protein called APOE. That, uh, the wrong type of APOE is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. You may have it, and it uh, doesn't mean you're gonna get Alzheimer's disease, but if you have it, it makes it more likely that you're gonna get Alzheimer's disease. It's an age onset disease, so we know that the biggest risk factor for Alzheimer's is, is, is age. Um, very rare for people in their 60s, in early 60s, to get Alzheimer's disease, and then it doubles every five years. So um, that's why one in 10 people over 65 have the disease. The processes that are starting the disease may actually begin very early. And there's indications that maybe as early as your 20s and 30s, some of the molecular events that trigger Alzheimer's disease, such as the buildup of the toxins that we talked about before, those start to show up very early. Alzheimer's, in fact, is hard to um, definitively establish. And most of the diagnoses of Alzheimer's disease are done by your neurologist who asks you 30 questions. And if you have a score of 25 uh, out of 30, maybe you're a potential candidate for Alzheimer's disease. If you have 20 or 18 out of 30, you probably have Alzheimer's disease. At a great Alzheimer's center like at Northwestern, the clinicians are 90% accurate, 93% accurate, which is really good. Uh, a lot of places the diagnosis is not so precise and accurate. The breakthroughs in brain imaging are indispensable. There's a, a great new probe for amyloid plaques that was developed by a group at Pittsburgh that has been purchased by General Electric. And you can actually image plaques in, uh, in the brain by PET scan. Unfortunately, that uh, comes too late. So you get a sense that those plaques are there, but that, that's not the best way of doing it. What we would really like to do is to move forward and uh, image something like the toxins that I was telling you about. So if we can develop a molecular MRI probe to identify those toxins in a living patient, then we can say, this person has a buildup of toxins in his hippocampus. And this person, because of those toxins are there, is a candidate for treatment. This person should be treated. There's two aspects of this that are, uh, at least two aspects, that are very important to me. One of them is that these people now have a chance to contribute to the discovery of treatments that work for Alzheimer's disease. And in fact, um, such early onset patients have been recruited for a, a trial that's going on in South America right now, where vaccines against these toxins that we've been talking about are going to be given to people who don't have Alzheimer's yet but will get it because they have the mutation that causes it. So that's something that a person with Alzheimer's disease can contribute to society and, and feel good about. Now with respect to um, job consequences, Alzheimer's is slowly progressive. And we all remember Ronald Reagan uh, in his early presidency probably was beginning some Alzheimer's symptoms middle of his presidency. I think uh, it's not a factor because once you get to the stage where uh, Alzheimer's makes you incompetent, everybody will know. Like any tragic disease, it's, it's hard to deal with, um, but people can adapt and uh, with the support of their families and their friends, uh, they do much better.